Hey guys, today we're going to be uh, taking a look at Darth Dawkins versus Jeff, which happened this morning. And it was pretty good. Um, and I think there's a lot of very simple lessons that can be learned from this interaction. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Hey, Tom Rabbit! I hope you got this for your recording. Hey, YouTube out there. Tom Rabbit likes to record these. Hey, Tom Rabbit! From which perspective? Natural laws? Do you believe there's a cause and effect relationship in the chronology of events? You say that question and calm down. You're not, you're not getting bullied. Calm down. So this is you the little game thing. you play. With. <laughs> so we start off and uh, Darth is already extremely agitated and yelling. <laughs> I like this guy. He says, calm down. You're not getting bullied. <laughs> When I ask you legitimate philosophical questions, I ask you a straightforward question, you give a response that does not address the question, and then when I point out you didn't answer the question, you try to dodge again. Do you believe in the causal principle? Okay, so this is going to be relevant for later, right? Let's keep that in mind, because here's our hero, Jeff, right? So, um, Darth Dawkins is being critical of this individual. He's saying, hey... I asked you a question and you didn't answer the question. He's, he's, he's mad about this, right? And he's accusing this other guy of dodging. So keep that in mind. To, to, uh, to answer your question, I need to understand what you're asking first. Do you and know, if, I, what I've is, explained what the causal principle is. Do you want me to explain it again? Hey, Darth. No, hey, Darth. Let me, let me jump in. Hey, Darth. Why does that sneak grounding in, in, in a disembodied okay, mind? I, I'll be glad to speak with you, Jeff, momentarily. But it's interesting. Why is it that you're talking to me in this room, but you refuse to talk with me in other rooms, Jeff? I've talked to you in rooms before. Uh, I don't know why Darth asked this question like, he, like the answer is some kind of big secret or something. I mean, bro. When you have mods, you're insufferable. That's why. No one wants to talk to you in there. No, is this the same Jeff that I'm thinking of here? Yeah, you're the yeah, you're the same guy. So don't lie, Jeff. You outright oh, I'm not lying. talk with me in another room. Unless you're the same Jeff that I'm thinking of. I've not you've called me up and wanted that conversation. But look, why do facts need grounding in the disembodied mind? There you go. Jeff is already reasserting the question, right? Good job. Okay, so, uh, w w repeat. You see how he's already just gotten him off the meta? Just just ask the question again. This is a trick that actually Darth uses a lot, right? He just keeps at, if he doesn't get what he wants, if the conversation is not going where he wants to, just keep at asking the same question over and over. Repeat the question again? Now, <laughs> since, since you, hold on a second. Before you repeat the question, it's very night of you to jump in and to save this guy from philosophically drowning, okay? It's very nice of you, Jeff. Good job. Now, what's your question? Why do facts need grounding in a disembodied mind? I don't understand the question. What? Okay. Jeez. Oh, do you mean you mean why do facts need grounding in the the disembodied mind of God? Yes. Okay, so what how I understand this question is Question is, why is it that facts need must necessarily be grounded in the mind of God as opposed to anything else? That's what I interpret the question to be. Okay, because they, in order for us to know ultimately why anything is, okay, what is ultimate will either be a mind or not a mind. We would only therefore be able to identify and defend if what is ultimate is a mind, if that mind has the sufficient characteristics to reveal itself, and therefore that that mind is behind the, the metaphysical contextual background information as to why anything is or, or happens. Now, I didn't even understand that answer, but it sounds like gibberish, and if it something like this were said to Darth, he would write this off as philosophy speak probably. Um, but it sounded like he started off at least raising an epistemic objection, which is actually not an answer to Jeff's question. Jeff's asking, why is it necessary that facts must be grounded in a mind as opposed to 
for example, the universe or whatever else, any kind of non-mind thing that he wants to ground it in. And he was basically started off by saying, well, if that was the case, if, if that's not the case, then we wouldn't know. And that's just this epistemic objection. The rest of his answer is gibberish to me. So without that which is ultimate being a mind and having the necessary properties and attributes, then what is ultimate, right? The actual context of why anything is, if there is something, would, would not be identifiable or defensible. There you go. He just, he, he just, contra look, he just said, let's go back to that. Listen to that again. Attributes as to why anything is or, or happens. So without that which is ultimate being a mind and having so without that which is ultimate being a mind remember the question is why is it necessary that it's a mind so he has to say it's necessary that it's a mind because but it actually sounds like he admits that it's possible that it couldn't be a mind listen closely the necessary properties and attributes then what is ultimate right? The actual context of why anything is, if there is something. Yeah. He just says, if it, if whatever else is ultimate, if it exists, well, then you're just saying it's not necessary. Would, would not be identifiable or defensible. And therefore every so-called fact would not be a fact because it has no uh, metaphysical context. Yeah. The fact that we can't identify what is ultimate or something that's just another epistemic objection now do you believe facts require context now here's darth he's trying to he try he oftentimes does this where when he's asked a question he'll answer it and he will immediately ask go on the offensive to try and prevent any kind of follow-up or anything because this answer that he gave First of all, it's not really clear, and um, it's it warrants follow up. But Darth definitely, absolutely doesn't want any of that to happen. Period. So what he wants to do, the tactic is to immediately follow up before the interlocutor even has a chance to ask a follow up. So let's see how Jeff deals with this. For their instantiation and intelligibility, Jeff. Can you, can you maybe put that, you said a lot there, maybe break that down uh, as an argument, like a, a rule, premise, premise to what you just said? No. And this is perfect. So Jeff has disregarded Darth's bait, right? And he's just asked him to elaborate on his answer because it is true that it wasn't clear, at least to me, probably everyone in this room. So now he's asking for an argument, which is even better because that's going to be really, really clear as to what Darth is actually saying. I have to do a question, Jeff. So now Darth is trying to say, oh, well, I asked you a question. You didn't answer. Oh, please. Yeah, I, I, you didn't answer mine. Yeah, I most certainly did. So stop lying. Why do facts oh, need grounding I mean, in a disembodied mind? I, 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 I just you, you made an argument to you. Okay. I gave right, you a scenario. So in can one you put scenario it, in, a wor in a world where we have God. Okay. So can you put God, it in a premise I, form? I, not, at, at this moment, I will not. But the point is, I just... At this moment, it's not that he will not. He cannot. Explain to you why. Now, I asked you a question. Are you going to answer it? Or are you going to dodge? Well, I, I'll answer it if you'll, if you'll explain your answer Jeff, so Jeff, I can understand Jeff, it. I'm not, listen, Jeff, I'm more than yeah. willing to talk with you. But if you want to play okay. this little game like a teenager, I'm not going to play that game. Well, I didn't feel like I was. I'm asking you to clarify your argument in the form okay. uh, of okay. using an inference rule with okay. two premises to, to maybe I break down have, what it is I, you're trying I, to I, say. I said you have an alternative here that you can, at any given moment, you will decide that your self-consciousness and your sense experience is either indicative and revelatory of God because God made it so, or you will choose not. Now, when you choose the not option, you therefore do not have any intelligibility. Okay. This is all, this is all just irrelevant stuff, right? This is all just appealing to like Jeff and whether or not his, his view is consistent or like some sort of like asking him, this is all irrelevant to whether or not 
it is necessarily the case that facts must be grounded in a mind as opposed to something else. This is all just a big, just subterfuge. The, I could simply say that I could put it in the form of a transcendental argument by saying uh, facts and the intelligibility thereof um, r necessitate the existence of God. Okay. There are facts and intelligibility for facts, therefore God. Okay. Now I just gave you a syllogism. Yeah, you did give a syllogism, and that's a transcendental syllogism. But the que Jeff's question is actually, that syllogism is not an answer to Jeff's question. Jeff's original question was actually basically asking for the argument for premise one. Kind of. So Darth gave an argument, and it's just tangential. It doesn't even, it doesn't even address Jeff's Jeff's question basically just reasserts Darth's claim. Now, what I'd like to know from you is this. Since you don't believe that God is necessary. Here we go again. Answer the question, then immediately ask the question to try and prevent any kind of follow-up. That he is the ultimate metaphysical context from which facts would be instantiated and have intelligibility. How do you have intelligibility for putative facts in your not God world? Yeah, so so I, I started out asking a question, uh, why do facts need grounding a disembodied mind? And you're turning it around to ask me a question without That's answering a lie, mine. That's Jeff. Stop lying. Excellent. Excellent. Just stay with it, Jeff. You're doing good. I just answered your question several times directly. Can you give it to, can you give it to me? Can you give it to me in the, using the inference rule with, with, I with a rule? I just gave a syllogism of a transcendental argument. Now, I mm -hmm. answered Well, I don't think you did. Hey, Jeff, hey, Jeff, if you want to play this little game, it's not going to go on much longer. I I'm not playing a game. It's, questions. Look, Jeff, you hey, Darth. Hey, Jeff, overtalk me again, and I will stop talking with you. Okay? Now, mm -hmm. I, in good faith, answered your multiple questions. I even multiple questions was all the same question <laughs> it's not multiple questions and and your syllogism wasn't an answer to jeff's question even catered you by giving you a transcendental syllogism okay a transcendental type of argument for god i i responded to your request jeff's question was why is x necessary right and Darth gave an argument which just asserted that X is necessary. So Darth never answered the question. I then answer your question. If you don't accept the reasoning that I have given, okay, then what I want to know is in your alternative world, how do you have intelligibility in a not God world? What ultimately would dictate what anything is and its intelligibility? Now, I answered your questions. Would you answer mine? Okay. Just to be clear, Darth, you can't present an argument. If you can't, that's fine. I have I don't have any reason to accept hey, that. Jeff, I, Jeff, you're over talking me. You're over talking me. I didn't over talk Jeff, you. I'm telling you. You why. did not over talk. No, no, no. I'm I'm gonna do that again. No, you, no, you're you over talking lie, me. You're you over talking lie, me. If you well, lie, there you go. Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff, mm -hmm. please, please go on. Answer. Answer nah. polite and maintain your voice, please. Yeah. So what? If, if he was not able to accept, if he couldn't make an argument, which he couldn't, I asked him several times to give me an argument. Please put it in the form of a syllogism. And he could not do it. And so if, if I have no reason to accept that facts need grounding in a disembodied mind, that's what what his claim was. Right. So if Darth is giving a syllogism to answer Jeff's question, the conclusion of that syllogism should be some. It should be that uh, facts must be grounded in a mind, right? That never happened. And he couldn't put. An, he couldn't make an argument. And he, and he kept trying to turn around to ask me a question. And so it's just it's just indicative of the dodging that he does. And uh, he goes into rooms and he plays these games. And if you ask him a, a straightforward, simple question to put an argument to it, he can't do it. True. This is the, this is Darth's crypt tonight. You guys all need to understand that Darth is horrible with arguments, right? We've seen it time and time again. And um, this 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 strategy is 
What Jeff's done here is just basically kind of done the equivalent of the original pre-sub, uh, like, mission statement to uh, shut the mouth of the unbeliever, right? And the way they would do that is just ask over and over, how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know that? And I guess the counter to that, <clears throat> one a good counter to that at least, is just to uh, ask, what's the argument for that over and over? And you can just shut the mouth of the believer. Do you want to say something like you were saying something during... Uh... I, I lost the uh, part of that. I doubt he even knows what grounding is, though. You can even ask him, what does he even mean by grounding? You're not going to give him good explanation. Hey, by the way, there's some, peop there's some people in the audience who would like to come up. I know Jeff is down, and some people are back-channeling me uh, that they want to come up um, on stage. There's a fellow named Jeff that does particularly. And... Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, Jeff, you're totally away. He didn't give you the right syllogism for what you were asking him, but he gave you another syllogism. And you could have got him there. He gave you the tag argument is P1 um, intelligibility implies God. There is therefore God, which is fine. That's valid. But then you have to press him for P1. What's the argument for ability implying God? Because there's an embedded necessity claim there that he can't, he can't provide the answer for that. So what he'll do is shift the burden of proof and then start asking you questions, asking you questions. It's just a rhetorical device. It's not a real argument. Yeah, these preceptors don't survive when they're not in rooms with mob powers. And you won't see them coming up here to talk because they know see, they can. The, the honest problem I have with um, such arguments is that they're too philosophically dense and um, they render themselves as basically word salads. And you can't get an argument out of it which can change your opinion. Well, some they, of them we are. Can some of them are stupid. They don't actually understand it. Others are deceitful. Like Darth, he understands what he's doing. He's just shifting the burden of proof. Did you catch that, Tom Rabbit? Hope you upload that to YouTube.